With DCS 2.7, the Hornet now has access to two targeting pods, the Lightning 2 and the AT Fleer. Originally, I was going to make a tutorial, but because the pods are so similar, I feel there is no need. I'd recommend you learn how to use the Lightning 2, and then quickly go over the differences with the AT Fleer, as functionally they are 95% the same in use, with the Lightning being slightly more complex. If you can operate one of these pods, you undoubtedly will be able to use the other intuitively with minimal effort. So instead, we're going to take a look at the Lightning 2 versus the AT Fleer and the practical differences and capabilities, and which one you should choose. Immediately, you can see the AT Fleer is the smaller of the two pods, being about 30 pounds lighter and more aerodynamic. It also mounts a navigation Fleer on the pylon. This could be projected onto the Hornet's HUD, just like you see in the Harrier. However, the US Navy did not implement this on their Hornets, and I don't believe we'll see it featured in DCS either. The Lightning, on the other hand, has the flexibility to be mounted on either the cheek or the underbelly station, whilst our AT Fleer is limited to just the cheek. In the cockpit, the two are largely the same, with HOTAS controls functioning exactly the same, with mirrored shortcuts like Velocity Vector Slave Mode. The only difference is the antenna elevation control with the AT Fleer, which can cycle the optical zoom as well as zoom factor, whilst the Lightning requires the fourth select button to cycle optical zoom. Both pods can be queued by our radar, helmet, and velocity vector, along with having similar tracking modes. Their respective FLIR pages are largely the same, just rearranged. The biggest difference is in the pitch, roll and AOA indicator of the Lightning being replaced by a velocity vector and artificial horizon on the AT FLIR. Being in the middle, this can be a bit distracting, but it provides a better bombful line and steering cues than the tiny one that you'll find on the Lightning. The Lightning can freeze frame the picture, which is of dubious usefulness in DCS, and has the ability to display bullseye location, which is very handy, whilst the AT FLIR can show us MGRS grid coordinates. Bullseye is great for giving offsets from a waypoint and sharing target info, so it's a shame to lose that on the AT FLIR. The AT FLIR is a little bit more advanced, with a special scene mode replacing area track, which allows you to slew around whilst also being stabilised to the ground, making it less jumpy when looking for targets. It will also show you your selected waypoint on screen relative to the ground, which is excellent if you've got multiple target reference points. The AT FLIR will also warn us of masking before it happens, unlike the Lightning. In physical capabilities, both pods are very similar again. Most notably, the AT FLIR lacks the NVG IR laser marker that the Lightning has. Both have laser designation and laser spot trackers, TV and IR cameras. The optics of the Lightning 2 has two optical zoom levels and ten zoom factors, whilst the AT FLIR has three optical zoom levels and two zoom steps, with the AT FLIR having a slightly better optical zoom. Personally, I prefer the rapid zoom levels on the AT FLIR over the slow cycle of the Lightning, but overall the Lightning 2 has the greatest zoom, whilst the AT FLIR has the widest field of view zoomed out. Now in DCS this is a significant difference, using the AT FLIR it's going to be harder to visually identify objects, as its zoom is much more limited, which is not something I was expecting. So overall, whilst I got the impression the AT FLIR and Lightning should be roughly equal, in DCS the Lightning 2 in fact wins over by a considerable margin, because of its extra zoom. It's not immediately clear if the Lightning uses digital or mechanical optical zoom for the zoom factor, nor is it mentioned in the DCS manual. Personally, I believe the Lightning 2 is in fact overperforming, with its extra zoom, which doesn't appear to degrade despite heavy magnification. If we quickly check out the older Lantern pod from Hitler's Tomcat, which does use digital zoom, you can clearly see the individual pixels with a higher zoom level. DCS's camera and IR rendering is undergoing a long overdue overhaul at some point in the future, so changes are on the horizon. It'll be interesting to see if these changes include a change for the video rendering, for the Lightning and other pods, but for the moment the Lightning is by far the better pod based on pure performance. 
There is one more factor however, our lightning pod on the Hornet is modelled after the pods in service by the land-based Spanish Hornets and the lightning also sees use with the US Marines on land. The AT FLIR however is used by US Navy Hornets specifically because it is certified for carrier launches, recoveries and operations, being rugged enough to survive this hostile environment unlike the lightning. So whilst it's not specifically modelled in DCS, you might find a mission where the designer has restricted naval hornets to just the AT FLIR, with the Lightning only being available to land-based aircraft. As a result, dealing with the lesser zoom and no IR laser marking capabilities will present a small challenge to naval hornet pilots. The AT FLIR having just been released may well be looking forward to some new features and upgrades going forwards, but for now, the answer comes down to realism. Do you want to go over a real world loadout with all the issues that might come with it, or chase optimal performance with the Lightning? Fortunately for us, if you can use one, you can easily use the other, so you don't need to commit any time learning the new system, making them almost interchangeable, so give both a try. I hope you enjoyed, and take care.